Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 11 of the subject business law and the topic of discussion is rights of unpaid salary i am dr rama bansal working as assistant professor at arya college ludhiana this project is sponsored by dth swayam prabha mhrd new delhi under the topic unpaid seller we are going to discuss today the first of all the meaning of the unpaid seller the definition the rights of the unpaid seller against the goods against the buyers personally and then consequences of breach of contract of sale seller's remedies as well as the buyer's remedies and at last the auction sale let's start with the topic first of all we have to be very clear with the meaning of unpaid seller section 45 of sales of goods act 1930 defines the meaning of unpaid seller a person who has transferred the ownership of the goods or the property to the buyer but still has not been paid either in full or in part the person the seller is known as unpaid seller the payment which is due may be the whole of the price or the price in part when a negotiable instrument has been received as conditional payment and condition is yet to be performed by the reason of the dishonor of the instrument the person is not getting the payment the seller is not getting the payment and the seller has not been paid yet the person would be known as unsell unpaid seller the seller remains unpaid till even a small portion of the price of the property transferred is left when the whole price has been tendered and the seller refuses to accept it once and then the seller will lose the title of unpaid seller because the the buyer has offered him the price and the seller has refused to accept that if there is a period of credit then the seller is not uh, not will be considered the uh, seller would not be considered as unpaid seller till the price of the good becomes due so uh, we are clear with the meaning of unpaid seller uh, if i say the person who is not being paid in in full or in uh, or in part for the goods transfer for the property transfer the person is known as unpaid seller and if the person is unpaid seller then definitely he must have some rights with him to claim that money from the buyer so if we talk about the rights of a unpaid seller these can be divided into two categories against the goods against the buyer personally so against the goods the unpaid seller has the right of lien right of stoppage of goods in transit right of resale right of withholding the property but against the buyers personally the unpaid seller has right to sue for price right to sue for damages and right to sue for interest let's discuss all these points in detail let's first discuss the rights of unpaid seller against the goods when once the property is still in the possession of the goods but the ownership has been transferred then the unpaid seller has these rights the first right is the right of lien it is under section 47 to 49 defined under goods of sales act 1930 what is the right of lien right of lien is to retain the possession of the goods with the seller until the payment for those respective goods is not been made means when the seller is in the possession of goods and the payment is not made but the ownership has been transferred to the buyer the seller the unpaid seller has a right of lien or uh, a lien of on those goods but this this right can be exercised when the following conditions are being satisfied or in the following cases one where the goods have been sold without any stipulation as to credit means no credit um, stipulations were made 
the, uh, at the time of the contract now the seller is unpaid where the seller have been, have been sold on credit but the term of credit has expired say there was a time period of credit to pay for the goods for 3 months now the 3 months have gone and the payment is still not made then this right can be exercised and when the buyer become insolvent now the seller uh, now the buyer has become insolvent as a, and is not in a position to pay for the goods to the seller now in that case the seller has a right of lien on the goods and this right of lien uh, it's important to know that is linked with the possession of the goods not with the title the seller would not give the possession of goods he would not transfer the goods personally to the uh, buyer but the title uh, of the goods would remain with the buyer the unpaid seller can exercise the right only when the goods are in his possession if the goods are not in his possession the right of lien cannot be uh, incurred can, cannot be exercised there is a case of barucha versus vadhya uh, with which we can make make this point more clear mr a sold certain shares to mr b the relatives share certificates and transfer forms duly signed were handed over by the seller to the buyer against payment of price by check the buyer became insolvent it was held by the privy council that the seller had no lien on shares because his lien ceased when he parted with the possession that means as this clay, as this case also clears uh, this point very clearly that once the unpaid seller has parted from the goods parted from the possession of the property this right of lien cannot be exercised uh, right of lien is indivisible in nature that means the right of lien would be on the complete portion of goods it cannot be on the it it cannot be for the proportionate price it cannot be for the proportionate goods buyer is not entitled to claim the delivery of a portion of goods on payment of a proportionate price that means if the seller is accepting the proportionate price for the proportionate goods he he would he cannot exercise this right further this is also clear with this example mr b sells to mr uh, mr uh, sorry mr a sells to mr b a certain quantity of sugar it is agreed that 3 months credit shall be given but mr b allows the sugar to remain in mr a's warehouse till the expiry of 3 months and then does not pay for them mr a may retain the goods for the price that means if the whole quantity of the sugar is available with mr a now he is he is not uh, going to give any amount of uh, the sugar to mr b if this is being allowed it would violate the uh, right of lien with the unpaid seller how the right of lien can be terminated the right of lien is linked with the possession of goods once the possession is lost the right of lien is lost but the unpaid seller loses his right of lien in the following cases one by delivery to carrier delivery to carrier for the purpose of transmission of goods to the buyer uh, when it be, it is being operated that means this unpaid seller has lost his right of lien uh, it is clear from the example the goods sold were delivered to buyers shipping agents who had put them on board a ship but the goods were returned to the seller for repacking while they were still with the seller on this mission the buyer became insolvent and the seller being unpaid claimed to retain the goods in the exercise of his lien it was held that having lost his lien by delivering to the shipping agent his refusal to deliver was wrongful that means once when he has delivered the goods to the carrier for the purpose of transmission to the buyer that means he has lost his right of lien on the goods second is by delivery to buyer that means once the unpaid seller has delivered the goods to the buyer that means he has lost his lien of goods seller's right is not defeated where the buyer has obtained the possession without the consent of the seller 
that means if by using some wrongful act by by using some wrongful means if the buyer has taken the delivery of the goods taken the possession of the goods that means seller's right is not defeated even the goods are in the possession of the buyer the seller can still exercise his right of lien because the goods are being transferred to the buyer without the consent of the seller the buyer has done some wrongful act and has adopted the goods third is by waiver if the seller uh, by using his authority has waived his right that means he he don't want to possess the good with him for not paying the um, for not paying for those goods the right of lien is terminated a waiver is expressed when it is mentioned in the contract that means when the contract was made if it is being mentioned in the contract that in case of non payment for goods the goods cannot be held the goods cannot be the right of lien cannot be exercised then it is a express waiver and in this case the right of lien is terminated a waiver is implied where the seller sells the goods on credit or grants of fresh terms of credit let's suppose the uh, there was uh, the term of credit in the contract when the contract of sale was made and on the day of the payment now the uh, seller has given 2 months more credit let's suppose so that means when the seller has given a fresh credit on the goods on the terms of the credit fresh fresh terms of credits are being given that means he has lost his uh, right of lien on the goods by tender of price means when the buyer tenders price for goods the seller no more no more remains an unpaid seller and when the seller is not an unpaid seller he cannot uh, exercise his right of lien the second right of unpaid seller is the right of stoppage in transit which is covered under section 50 to 52 right of stoppage in transit means to stop the goods in transit means once the goods have been uh, goods have been shipped by the seller to the buyer now the unpaid seller wants to stop those goods in transit that means he is using his right of stoppage in transit that means the right can be exercised only under the following circumstances one the seller must be an uh, must be an unpaid seller the seller must have parted with the goods but still the buyer have not acquired it means goods are still in transit these are apart from seller and apart from buyer too the buyer must be insolvent means the buyer should not be in a condition to pay for the goods only then the unpaid seller can use this right this is clear from the case of bethel versus clark mr b who had bought goods from messrs clark and company of glasgow instructed the sellers to sell the goods by a certain name the ship to melbourne goods were first rail to london and then ship to melbourne a maid's name receipt being sent to buyer on the way mr b becoming insolvent the seller gave notice to the railway company to stop delivery to buyers but it was too late then they gave fresh notice to the ship owners claiming back the goods before the ship arrived at melbourne on arrival there the receiver in bankruptcy of mr b demanded the bills of lading from the master held the goods have been effectively stopped in transit and trustee could not claim them that means once the goods are uh, out of the possession of the seller and the buyer has not received the good till date that means if in in that between time if seller exercise his this right of stoppage of goods in transit this is a valid right with him what uh, what we mean by duration of transit goods are in transit from the time when they are delivered to a carrier for the purpose of transmission to the buyer until the buyer takes the delivery the period in between is known as duration of transit the carrier may hold the goods for as a seller's agent in case seller has exercised his right of stoppage in transit as buyer's agent when seller cannot exercise his right of stoppage in transit and also as an independent contractor the unpaid seller may exercise the right of stoppage in transit how 
by actually taking possession of the goods that means he can goods uh, back with the, uh, back into his own custody by giving notice of his claim to the carrier in whose possession the goods are at present that means the carrier who is taking the goods to the buyer on behalf of the seller the unpaid seller can give the notice of his claim to the carrier that the goods should be stopped in transit means it should not be delivered to the buyer so we have uh, read with the right of lien and right of stoppage in transit but what is the difference between these two let's see first is possession of goods what is the possession of goods the right of lien can be exercised only when the goods are in the possession of unpaid seller but the right of stoppage in transit can be exercised when the goods are not in the possession of unpaid seller these both are different right of lien when the goods when goods are in the possession of seller and right of stoppage when goods are not in the possession of the unpaid seller insolvency of the buyer uh the right of lien can be exercised even when the buyer has not become insolvent means buyer is not insolvent but he is not paying even then the right of lien can be exercised but right of stoppage in transit can only be exercised when the buyer has been declared as an insolvent termination of right right of lien can be terminated as soon as the unpaid seller loses the possession of the goods means the possession of the goods is lost right of lien is also lost right of stoppage in transit is terminated as soon as the carrier of goods loses the possession and deliver them to the buyer means when once the goods are being given to the carrier of a carrier to give the goods to the buyer and once he deliver the goods the possession is lost the right of stoppage in transit is lost process of right the essence of right of lien is to retain the possession of the goods and in case of stoppage in transit it is to regain the possession of goods here it is to retain and in case of stoppage in transit it is to regain the possession of the goods what is the essential element essential element in case of right of lien is it is a possession is the test of a right of a lien and that is if the possession is lost right is lost and in case of stoppage in transit non delivery of goods by the carrier to buyer is the test of right of stoppage in transit means if the carrier has not transferred the goods to the buyer this right can be exercised third is third right of unpaid seller first we have discussed with the right of lien second we have discussed with right with right of stoppage in transit third is right of resale under section 54 of sales of goods act 1930 the right may be exercised of uh, uh, in in following circumstances one when the goods are of a perishable nature perishable nature goods cannot be retained for so long so to claim the price the unsale unpaid seller has the right to resell them where the seller has exercised his right of stoppage in transit he can give the notice to buyer of his intention to resell means once the uh, unpaid seller has exercised his right of stoppage in transit now he may intimate to the buyer that if the buyer is not going to pay in some specified period he will sell the goods to the other customer in case the buyer makes default buyer is not going to pay any kind of money for the goods sold to him then the unpaid seller has the right to resell and when the seller exercise this right the buyer who acquires goods uh, goods title there's to as against the original buyer the fourth right of an unpaid seller is a right of withholding delivery that means this right is similar and the coextensive with the right of lien and stoppage in transit in this the uh, the unpaid seller can withhold the delivery of the goods to the buyer and this right can be exercised even if the sale was on credit or that the goods were specific or unascertained goods that means in case of an unpaid seller unpaid seller has the right of lien right of stoppage the goods in transit right of resell and right of withholding the delivery now we will discuss the rights of unpaid seller against the buyer personally till now we have read the rights against the 
goods now we are reading the rights of unpaid seller against the buyer personally number 1 sued for price under section 55 if the property has passed to the buyer and goods are in goods are in his possession then the unpaid seller has only remedy for the price because he has lost the possession of the goods now he cannot retain the goods he cannot stoppage the goods in transit he cannot resell the goods but what he can do he can only suit for the price of goods here the uh, if the price is payable on, on a certain day irrespective of the delivery the seller may institute a recovery for the uh, suit for recovery of the same too second remedy is suit for damages of non acceptance under section 56 uh, if the buyer wrongfully neglects or willfully refuses to accept the goods or to pay for the goods then the seller may exercise his right to claim to file a suit for damages for non acceptance of goods third is suit for interest under section 61 where the buyer wrongfully refuses to accept the goods and is not paying for them then the court may award that award interest on the price of the goods that is the right of the unpaid seller means if the buyer has not paid yet and is delaying the payment he can file the suit in the court for the for the interest on the original payment due and this interest would be from the date of tender of goods to from the date when the price is payable and in case the goods were sold on the credit the interest will run from the expiry of the credit period let's say the goods were sold on 1st january the credit period was on 1st march and after 1st march till when the buyer would not pay the payment he has to pay the interest on the original payment and seller is entitled for interest when he is in a position to recover the price means if if in any suit it is being found that unpaid seller can't claim the price from the buyer then he is also not able to get for the interest on the original amount and if he can sue for damages for breach of contract he is not entitled to interest it's very interesting to know he once he has uh, filed a suit for breach of the contract in that case he is not entitled for interest he can claim interest only in the case when he is filed a suit to recover the price of goods from the buyer now what are the consequences of breach of contract of sale they both have because the breach can be from any